Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovic. Today, we're going to talk about how to make sure that this kind of crap never hurts your vehicle. All right, now uh, we just got back from Georgia uh, two days ago, and I had to go down yesterday and shoot a wedding in Detroit. So I drove from up here in northern Michigan down to Detroit, shot a wedding, came around, and then turned around and came back. And you can see in February here in northern Michigan, we have a lot of snow. And, uh, that means salt, okay? They use salt on the road. Salt is very corrosive. Salt is pretty nasty. If you live in a place that uses salt, even like in the Detroit area where it was actually worse, if you don't, they don't get snow all the time that stays like we do here, but when they get a snow or ice, they salt those roads heavily. Well, that salt will sit on the roads. It will stay there and it keeps working. But then, and then as the plows push the snow off the side of the road, then it melts and it comes back on. But basically, here where I live at, up here especially, you can count on there being a layer of salt on the roads from middle of November basically middle of november even sometimes beginning of december depends but let's say december all the way into april you can expect there to be salt on the roads that's you know that's five months a year where your truck is, or vehicle can look like this how do we fix that how do we protect against that well look at that you can see that that's that's pretty bad this salt is very corrosive, very, very corrosive, causes rust, gets into everything, robs moisture from everything, um, takes to, you know, it breaks down grease. It's very abrasive. This stuff here, if I were to take my finger and write my name in here like this, press hard and write my name, I'll bet in the spring when I wash this, you'd be able to see where I wrote my name in it. This stuff is so corrosive here, okay? I mean, that's, that's like sandpaper almost, like a fine polishing sandpaper. So number one, we want to do the prep beforehand, and then we want to do the prep after season, okay? So in the fall, we want to do this setup to it. And then he's out here with me. Um, we want to do this in the beginning, in the fall, and then we want to do this immediately in the spring. Because right now, I can't, it's not like I can wash this thing very well. I could take it to a car wash, okay, a quarter car wash or a uh, drive through car wash. The problem with them is it's it's 12 degrees out here right now. My hose is done. My hose is disconnected, frozen, and laying somewhere all over out here, under here. Uh, there's no way I can wash this. If I bring it to a quarter car wash at 12 degrees, the second you spray it, it's going to freeze right back on there anyway. And heaven forbid, in this condition, I go to one of those automatic car washes because they are going to, again, remember we said if I write my name on here, you'd see it in the spring, this abrasiveness. Well, that is going to just turn this into, it's almost like washing it with sandpaper on one of those uh, drive through automatic car washes right now in this condition so we don't want to do that and it's too cold so we wait until we get a warm day when you have a warm day and you want to go to a quarter car wash you can spray it off wash it yourself do that kind of stuff that's one thing i recommend avoid the automatic washes uh this time of year that's my advice do it yourself at a quarter car wash where you can first spray it off and then you can wash it afterwards and get it done right but the key is to get rid of that salt whenever you can in the off season or i mean in the, during the winter time now the prep, though, is what's most important for this. So we have, this thing is covered everywhere, okay? I mean, you can see that it is just literally covered with this salt. I mean, this stuff is so thick and so everywhere. And on every single piece, there is not a speck of this truck, which is black in color, that has not got salt completely covering this entire truck. You can see here where I've had to touch this a couple times getting in and out of my tailgate. Try not to. Try to not touch that salt. Try to not let your hands touch it. Got a little bit where I, when I filled up with gas there, but try to avoid touching it at all costs anywhere you can. You can see we got some coming in and out of the back end where you open it and then you're going to close it. But notice I'm trying hard to not touch this vehicle. Okay, so it just, I, I can't say that enough. Try to not touch that salt. But it is going to get into everywhere. It is going to be inside of your door jams here it is going to be on the undersides of all of this okay it is going to get into all these nooks and crannies and places that need to be cleaned out so to make this work good and be okay your job is to in the fall before this even happens prep the vehicle so that it is capable of handling a winter time of this kind of stuff 
then once winter is over throughout winter wash it when you can and it, you know when you can and then in the spring as soon as the snow is gone and that, that stuff is off the roads that's when we hit it one more time and, and, and try to uh, do the same thing as our prep, but more of a repair and restore kind of a factor. So what are we doing? We are going to, in the spring or in the fall, again, it's the same thing for both of them. We want to wash it very good. We then want to wax it with a real wax, okay? A real actual wax. Not like these little spray-on waxes, but an actual solid, real liquid wax. So we want a liquid or paste, but we want a real wax on it to protect it. See, all of this salt is actually, on my truck, is not touching the truck. This is sitting on the wax layer. There is a fresh wax layer that was put on this truck right before winter because of this reason. None of this salt is actually touching the actual truck. It is just sitting on a wax layer that is protecting the truck. Also, in here, none of this on the suspension stuff, the salt and things is actually touching the actual suspension or any of the metal. It is touching what is actually coated with a Womax type, uh, actually it's a uh, uh, fluid film, but a, a wool type covering coating that is on that, a wax type coating that protects all of that. So those are protected, okay? So that's the key thing to this is to have the vehicle protected so that none of this salt is actually hitting your actual vehicle or doing any damage to it. And then when winter's over, get rid of that stuff. So what do we use for that? So here's what I use. These are things I do all the time. And I will show you here. I buy this stuff in bulk. So um, for the actual undercarriage, fluid film, okay? Can buy it in a gale and this stuff here I use because it's thicker. It's designed to be put in a special spray gun, which I do not have. But I actually will dip a brush in this and I can brush it. And that's what I use that for. I literally take a paintbrush, stick it into that thing, and then I just brush it where I want it to go. The spray spray cans are super, super simple and work fantastic. You can buy them in a three-pack, six-pack, whatever you want. But you coat everything underneath your vehicle with this. Get down under there. Get downwind. I like to park my vehicle so the wind is blowing when I do this in the fall or in the spring. I want the v wind blowing under the vehicle from the front to the back because I'm going to start in the front and work to the back. That way I can go in there and I can get from under the front and I can just spray everything under there coat it all really good and the wind is taking it all towards the back of the vehicle so i'm not it's not in my face then i come in from the other side of the wheels from each side underneath and i spray under there and i coat that whole side then i go to the other side and i spray under there and i coat that whole side and i just work my way to the back by having the wind blow from the front of the truck to the back of the truck it is sending all of that out the back it's not blowing that stuff back in my face but fluid film phenomenal Okay, doesn't get any easier than this. Take that, put your little wire thing in it, and just spray everything under there and drown it. Done. Sweet, simple, protects everything in there. I use that fluid film on my, I'm actually spraying every part of underneath these vehicles. I use it on my trailers. I use it on everything. But I will lay right here, get under there, and I'll spray everything I can. And I come over here. I drowned everything in here, all the suspension stuff, the frame, everything I can in here, everything I can reach, get way up in here, drowned all this. Then I come in from under here and spray everything under here, working my way right back, all the way to the back, and I do the same thing on the other side. Usually takes me about five or six cans each time, so you're looking at about 50 bucks, you know, in the spring, 50 bucks in the uh, fall to undercoat that entire vehicle. Maybe in the fall, or I mean in the uh, spring, I do it really good, probably five or six cans in the spring, or I mean in the fall, before the sea, before winter gets here. In the spring, I usually just use probably three cans is what I'm using. So again, and so you're looking about 10 bucks a can, it's about what it costs. So not too bad, uh, works fantastic. So that's gonna protect all of your undercoating stuff. WD-40, I use this stuff for all of my, uh, the wheel wells inside of there. I use it for, I just, again, I use this stuff constantly, and I use this every time I wash a vehicle. So I'm using this here, spring and fall, but everything else I'm hitting with WD-40 for all the frame stuff, all that stuff. I'm not getting underneath it like crazy, but every time I wash a vehicle, wheel wells, this will eat all the dirt out of your wheel wells instantly. So I buy it by the gallon, 
put links down below for all this, put it in his bottle, and I drowned everything, all the wheel wells, everything like that out with WD-40. Uh, I do my inside the doors, under the doors, my rocker panels. Everything gets hit with WD-40 constantly. Keeps everything well protected. I love WD-40. Then, in the spring, when you're done, you're going to have all these little, you don't see it on a black one too much, but you'll see it on white. And if you watch my uh, my Trailhawk video, I showed you this stuff in the Trailhawk video at the end with this. Uh, but you're going to get iron. All these little red specks all over your car that you see on a white or silver car, light colored cars, that is brake dust. Okay, It's from the um, it's iron from the brake pads of everybody's car that sits on the road. Wind and water pick them up and spray them all over your car and they turn into rust immediately. Your car is not rusting. The iron deposits on your car are rusting and you're seeing it as a red spot. This, okay, and they make a bunch of different different places to make it. You want the one that uh, definitely changes color. See how this says changes color? I'll put links to this stuff again below for you, but this iron remover spray, spray clay, uh, this you just coat the car, and then you'll see that stuff turn purple and then you rinse it off. It's really easy stuff. Um, but that will get rid of all that contaminant that's on your vehicle. And then you want, this is your actual real waste. This is what I use, real wax, okay? These are great. This is a good, uh, this is a good thing. But this is more like the WD-40 in the sense that here's my main form of protection. Here's my main form of protection for the paint. This is my... Every time I wash it, touch-up stuff is the WD-40 for the underbody and the metal. And then this is my touch-up stuff that I do um, every three or four washes to the act, you know, because it's real easy. You just spray it on, and uh, then when you wipe dry your car, it's just putting that extra layer of ceramic. But this is not good enough to do. You need this. And I don't care who makes it, but you need an actual real wax um, in the fall and then in the spring, in my opinion, to protect it. These are great. But that's more in between your two of these. One in the fall, one in the spring, as far as I am concerned. And then Armor All for all of your plastics and your tires. But your plastics especially, um, it keeps them protected. It keeps that salt from really getting into there. Uh, I use this stuff. I coat it on religiously um, before in the fall. Before we get into that season of salt and stuff like this, I will make sure that I am doing this that week before winter or two weeks before the things start to get bad. I will coat this stuff daily. Put it on a rag and then I am coating all of my fender flares and plastics. I want this stuff just permeated into that. Any of that, uh, those plastics on there, the black plastics. Um, so that they are just soaked with this stuff and they stay that way. And that will keep them from fading and keep them from soaking up that salt on there like that and, and losing color. So this is basically all it takes. And it's not a lot of time. But by doing these few things, it's going to make tremendous differences for you. And if you buy them in bulk like I do, um, you know, I mean, this jug right here. You get a gallon of this stuff for the cost of buying like two bottles of WD-40. And uh, so, I, I, I mean, buying it the way I buy it saves you tremendous amounts of money on all of this kind of stuff. Even my armor all. You know, this costs like, this is like two bucks more than this and I actually will water it down. So I, I don't just take this thing and pour it in here to refill it. When I use a Armor All bottle, I'll refill it with Armor All to about right here, and then the rest is water. And, it, you know, for as often as I'm using it, it works perfectly. So I actually will water that down when I use it. But I buy this stuff all in bulk. There will be links down below for you. It just makes life really easy. Use uh, your... Uh, Right here, you can see I have my microfiber cloth there. I got bunches of new ones here. Microfiber, so you can see, look at all the armor alls. Like I said, I, I, I'm not kidding when I say I buy this stuff in bulk. But, uh, you know, that's all it takes. Nothing to it. Not complicated stuff to do. But these couple little, you know, the, this, this one hour here, okay, and the one hour here in the fall, will make a huge difference for you. Wash it when you can in the winter, and then in the spring, an hour here, and another hour here, and, and you're done. And then when you wash it in between the season, you know, you're, you're basically, you know, all summer long when you're washing it, you are basically, you know, real simple. Little WD-40, little touch-up wax, 
constantly using an arm roll. That will make everything all better for you. Keep your vehicle looking nice, safe, lasting long, even here in these salty snow belt areas and uh, the miserable weather and stuff like that we have here. It can let your vehicle look like this where so many people are like, oh my God, that thing is going to be wrecked. Look at that. That is so horrible. I can't believe you let him get like that. There ain't nothing here hurting this thing at all. That's everything, all this salt is literally sitting on protected surfaces already and it's not affecting anything. I make sure that it's not affecting anything. That way I get best resale value for my vehicles. They last long. I don't have any issues with them and they always look good. So there's my tip for you. Links will be down below. Take advantage of it. Talk to you later. Bye.